contradicting the entire theory of ancient evolution from the Babylonians, ancient evolutions from the Greeks, and now evolution in its modern version in Darwinism that separates man and dinosaur by about 64 million years. Now, Dennis, this audience needs to see what is here. This Harangal wood and the third counterpart of it has been dated 1,600 years in age, long before the modern discovery of dinosaur fossils. Caught in the act is a dinosaur attacking a man, attacking a warrior, in fact. He has the plate size uh, indentations, rosette patterns on the skin. He has the additional patterns and is a spinosaurid. That's a particular type dinosaur uh, representing Acrocanthosaurus and representing other dinosaurs. Do you have an idea what dinosaur this might be? Well, it could be a Spinosaurus. Uh, it, uh, it could be a Spinosaurus, which was a Spinosaurid. And notice the erect tail and the indentations or the patterns. Here, he is caught in the act of actually attacking a Peruvian warrior. Now, in the middle of the motif, we have the basic character eating a small Spinosaurid dinosaur, delicacy perhaps, or on special ceremonial occasions, and he's beginning with the tail. He has the tail in his mouth. Here we have the dinosaur, Spinosaurus, caught in the act of attacking a warrior. Now, Dr. Swift, I was amazed when I first saw this. Here we have a warrior with a spear attacking a dinosaur, and the same general type dinosaur who may or may not have been a Spinosaurid. Here we have the warrior using his spear to attack in the upper pelvic region. Can you tell us why? Well, we have scientific evidence that in some species of dinosaur in the ganglia pelvic region, there's a nerve center. And that is where they would attack, which would cause a paralyzation of the back of the dinosaur. And? the neck of the dinosaur yes, being the paralyzed yes, yes. and of course the tail being paralyzed and that is specifically what we see in contradistinction the other dinosaur the spinosaurus attacking the warrior has an erect tail has a, a very agile neck and body here we have at the bottom of the same peruvian pole another warrior he would have to be a warrior this other warrior attacking a dinosaur much like the first, he is using a knife in the upper pelvic area and a knife in the upper tail area and has so paralyzed the tail and paralyzed the neck of the dinosaur. This is indisputable evidence. Caught in the act, the warrior caught in the act, the dinosaur is caught in the act, indisputable evidence that these people saw living dinosaurs. That being the case, what does this do for evolutionary theory? Well, it obliterates it. It destroys it. It's, it's, it's kaput. It's finished. It's a zero with the hubcaps kicked off. It, by their own admission, they say if there's any evidence of dinosaurs and man living together, not only would that destroy evolution, but the names of the discoverers would be thundered down the corridors of history as men who made the most monumental discovery of the this century or maybe of all time. Those are and, direct quotes from the that I've heard. And I would point out that with the Harango wood, it's the same with the Tiwanaku cup over here with the dinosaur with the dermal spines on the back, that it cracks and weathers. This cannot have been carved in modern times. Right. You have all the weatherization on the outside, and it cracks and all this kind of thing. Plus, it has been dated at 1,600 years old indisputable evidence, scientific evidence, and in order to so carve it, it would have to be relatively green uh, because it is so hard. In one geographical region of about 300 miles by 200 miles, we have three giant geoglyph geoglyphs on the Nazca lines, two Diplodocus dinosaurs, one that looks similar to a Pac Pachycephalosaurus, a Triarchosaurus, just on the Nazca lines. 
that ought to be enough right there to put every evolutionist out of business. And then no. we have the uh, ecostones. We have textiles, many textiles with dinosaurs on them from different civilizations found at different times, some by official archaeologists. Then we have the ceramics, and we, now we have a Chosky Inca runner, and inside the tomb, in his mailbag, uh, is his water jug with a dinosaur on it. All displayed on the program today. This being true, as you have seen, not with records, but the actual artifacts, this means that Job chapter 40 is verified. This means that Jesus' authentication of the Old Testament and later in Revelation authentication of the entire Old Testament and New Testament canon gives a specific verification that the Bible is the Word of God. That being the case, I think it's time that we got right with God. I think it's time that we made peace with our Creator. That Creator came to earth loved our families, went to Calvary, died for our sins, was buried, rose from the dead, and at this moment is speaking to your heart. Would you just open your heart's door and pray this simple prayer? Just pray it with me. Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus. Lord Jesus, right now, I open my heart's door to you. I need you to cover my sins with your blood. I need the power of your resurrection. Lord Jesus, come in right now. I accept you as my personal Savior. And as my Savior, you're my Lord. And I will serve you with all my heart. Thank you for giving us your word and proving it through scientific evidence. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, I welcome you home to the family of God. Creation in the 21st Century has been sponsored by Trinity Broadcasting Network. And only with your love gift of support can this program stay on the air. So write to Creation in the 21st Century, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. Creation in the 21st Century is a unique program on TBN combining biblical knowledge with scientific verification. Much of the information that I use on the program is available. Contact us. Just write Creation Evidence Museum, P.O. Box 309, Glen Rose, Texas 76043, or call us at 254-897-3200. We look forward to hearing from you today.